Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. And I need to just get back into a non-Blood Red Elf Shadow and figure out which one I like. <clears throat> so, this is what we're doing. We can play against any fair decks. That entire sequence. Unless I guess the, the Blue Moon deck's a fair deck. But they're they're somewhat they're also somewhat like a prison deck. They're looking to lock their opponents out with a Blood Moon. <clears throat> Hot take, Blood Moon is the second most offensive thing in modern to Tron Lands. Playing against JoJo. We're on the play, which is great. Now we'll keep this hand. This is going to get us an Overgrown Tomb. Because we want to cast our discard spell on turn one every time. I'm going to go with Inquisition first. Because if I draw a fetch land, I can get a turn two shadow anyways. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to kick a little bit of a cold. All right. We're playing against Jund. So here we go. Here's where the rubber meets the road. I found this Jun matchup to be fine from the side of Death Shadow because you're just a much leaner deck than they are. But that being said, you can just get elfed out of the game. Like sometimes Blood Red Elf just gets you. So the only card we know about is Lightning Bolt. So let's. Get this Tarm away from play. If they kill this Gloyf, then we're only an instant away from Delirium. It's a discard spell. Okay. There's the Black Leaf Cliffs. I should have played my Tarm away. I should have thought these before combat because I could have grown Gloyf. That was a mistake on my part. Yeah, that was dumb. Just a little plays. If they bolt me here, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, see, I missed out on a point of damage, which might lead up. They'd be at 13 now, so we should t at least watch that. Okay, scavenging. So that's bad. We need to draw a land off the top. <coughs> We need to draw a fetch land so we can terminate this. Then we need to be careful about like, um, okay, so that's a good draw. <coughs> so my opponent can just fire up Raging Ravine, but I think that's a problem for future Dylan. <coughs> Wow, no Raging Ravine activation. That's egregious. If you activate Raging Ravine, then I'm dead in two turns. I can't, you force my attack, you, I can't attack you. Maelstrom Pulse and I'll puke, okay. Okay, so against John, I want my grind package, I want my Snapcaster Mages, my Maelstrom Pulses, and my Liliana Last Hopes. I do not want Counter Spells. And I don't want Battle Rages, but I do think that I want a Rampager. Because I can I can kind of pick and choose when I draw the Rampager, and then the game's going to go long anyways, and sometimes a 4-4 four, four for 4 isn't terrible. Why not Traverse last turn? <clears throat> if I had Delirium, then it was purely a mistake, Kachopa. There's no other way around it. But I don't think I had Delirium. Because he ate my creatures. If I had Delirium, it was just a pure plan. Um, I think I'm going to bring in a Miser's Brutality. I don't want too many of these. I actually can probably cut an Inquisition as well. No, I want to keep my Inquisitions because it's important to hit, like, scavenging. I'm going to bring in Brutalities. Brutality kills, dark, kills Blood Red Elf, kills Bob, can gain me some life in a pinch, 
And that's the easiest way to lose this matchup. Everyone knows that if you let a Bob go unchecked, that's just the best way to lose against any of these decks. And we have an answer to Bob, so we're going to keep this hand, and we have a really good grind card in our opponent Mulligans. Yeah, if I if I had Delirium, I don't think that I did a Chopa, but if I had Delirium, and then it was it was just a pure punt. <coughs> Mad respect for my opponent for playing Bob, not Skrillex. So we have double green, so we just want as many black sources as possible. So I think I'm actually just going to ditch my land here. Escalate with two modes. Minus two, minus two. Take a card. Get a little bit of tempo here. Take like a Collective Brutality. It would be a great card to hit for me. I could have ditched a Tarmogoyf. We hit a Maelstrom Blitz. So he's got Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Oh, he's got Liliana of the Last Hope. All right, that sucks. But he can't do anything next turn because of his clunky-ass tap land. Tarmogoyf. Just kidding. Okay, so now I'm going to take his last hope. Should have done did that mistap there. Take his last hope, fetch a stomping ground, and then get my own Tarmogoyf down. And as you can see here, like, we are just... I think I think a reason that we have an advantage in this matchup is that I'm just act I'm just like I'm working on just such a more efficient access than my opponent. Like my opponent's deck is so plotty and clunky. So if I play Lily on the last hope, plus on the plus on this, I get to eat this. Nah, it's not worth it. I'm just gonna cast another Tarmogoyf. Play a tap land. <coughs> and then I'll start working my last hope when I got two blockers. And can begin to chew through his resources. But his deck's just like grossly flooding out, which is something that my deck doesn't do. Now, that being said, I just ripped two discard spells in a row. So like, you know... Each of us are having a little bit of our own issues. Now my opponent can go like removal spell into activate treetop, smack my Liliana, but that's going to cost them their Tarmogoyf. Because I'm just going to eat their Tarmogoyf with my Tarmogoyf. <clears throat> and if my opponent fires up the Raging Ravine, I just block Ravine and Finx. It takes, I block Ravine and Finks, it takes two, and then I plus on the Finks next turn. So we're just very, we're very far ahead here. Yep. Um, Echopa, most of the time I do, but like, I think this deck's built in such a way where maybe, I don't know, you need you need the discard spells in the early game, I think, but it is bad right now. Like, if these were anything else, these were removal spells or threats, we'd be so clearly ahead in this game. We still could get elfed out of this game, but as of right now, we're in good shape. Now we are flooding out a little bit. Might as well take a discard spell. See what they have. It's probably a land. Or is he going to fatal push my target life? Oh, this is a, such an egregious missequencing from me. Yeah, that was absolutely horrible. So now I go block. So now I'm going to lose my Liliana because of this stupid mistake that I made. Oh, that's so frustrating. It's going to cost him a Tarmogoyf. He basically trades Tarmogoyf for my Liliana of the Last Hope. Bob. Fires up Treetop. Wow, he doesn't attack. That is unreal. 
Okay, so I can go roll back, get my Tarmogoyf, Brutality this. I'm not likely going to ultimate this, so I think I'm going to try to roll this back, get a Tarmogoyf, and then kill the Bob. Just kind of insulate my board a little bit, make him trade a couple things if he wants to get into this Liliana. Yes, my opponent punted back very hard. Which sometimes all you need to win in Magic. And then I just repunted, but we have a third blue source, which is good. Oh my gosh, I need to tighten up here. I, I milled over my breeding pool. Oh, we're talking a little bit too much to the chat. We're making some mistakes here. Oh, that's so frustrating. I gotta slow down. Because now he gets to just eat this. So I'm just gonna, oh, he gets a Blood Ray Elf. Okay, into Liliana the Veil. Yeah, and now now we're just we we're, we've lost this game because I fucked up here. <clears throat> yeah, we're just dead. Yep, I messed that up. That was just a complete and egregious punt on my part. Like I I, I did a huge punt and then they top decked into like the nut there, which even if they miss on this Bloodbraid Elf, all I do is eat their ravine, and then it's Kitchen Vinks versus. Um, it's Kitchen Finks and Bob and Treetop Village again, and one card against Dark Confidant against my two Tarmogoyfs and whatever I draw. So, so that was just like egregious there. Yeah, this hand's very good. I'm going to lead off on this Swamp because I don't know if I want to get Blood Crypt or Overgrown Tomb with this land. And we're not, like, in a hurry to do a super fast shadow. Yeah, we got we got some more. We got some, but I might need some in a little bit. All right. So it's looking like here I'm going to take Liliana the Veil and Tarmogoyf. Kitchen Finks just doesn't do enough. It might, well, it might do stuff with a Lightning Bolt. <clears throat> I know I'm taking this Liliana the Veil, so let me take this Veil first. And then we'll see what I draw. Because if I draw another land, then I have an easy decision. If I don't draw another land, then things are going to get a little hard. <clears throat> Let's look at my top card. <clears throat> Do a little scrying. Okay, so we're getting a stomping ground. Which means that I can terminate the Tarma Life. So I'm just going to Thought Seize the Kitchen Things. <coughs> Kitchen Finks in conjunction with Lightning Bolt might be able to do a little bit of work. Yeah, I'm just going to take the Kitchen Finks and then look to Edict this Tarmogoyf. Get a two for one. <clears throat> Lace is out. Lace is out for sure. So I draw this. This is going to get me Watery Grave. Because I want to be able to cast a Snapcaster Mage if I draw it. I don't have Delirium yet, so traversing for a time of life doesn't do a lot. So now we just get the clean two for here. My opponent plays their own Liliana. It's going to be we're going to be in a bit of a difficult spot. Give me the two for as you free my soul. I want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Traverse for Tarmogoyf. Actually, I could traverse for Snapcaster and then Snap Inquisition. Gas. <coughs> and then they, like, it's another two for. So this gets me Overgrown Tomb, and then I know two out of the three cards. Is it worth Snap Thought Seizing? I think it's worth Snap Thought Seizing. With this much removal in my hand, my life total is okay, and I would like to hit a Bloodbraid Elf. And yes, I'm at a virtual seven, but that's okay. All right, so now I'm at a virtual four. All right, we're gonna take this decay. 
and then like mind our life total here. They gotta kill the Snapcaster Mage. Wow. Okay. Sign me up. We're not gonna cast that. Why do you have a warning on your avatar? Because I've uh, because I've um, I'm yielding priority, but I'm just I'm just like auto passing, so it gives me the um, my dex. It gives me the uh, whatever it is. I can't think. Tail. So now I've got an Inquisition. I've got a Shadow Forest. Yeah, it just means I'm auto passing. Okay, so that resolves. So we effectively trade Inquisition for Lightning Bolt there because that's what we wanted to happen. <clears throat> and now we just need no Bloodbred Elf. <coughs> a Liliana would be gross. Terminate's kind of bad. Yeah. That's all right. No pass. So now we're now we're in the part of the game where Jen does well in. What we are really looking for here is a Liliana the Last Hope. Okay. So we're gonna ditch our land, untap and pulse this Liliana. So I've got answers to Bob and Tarmalife. Last hope. Look at our last hope. Tilt. Uh, okay. So we keep passing. <coughs> okay, so there's a Raging Ravine. So they have something going on at least. We don't have anything going on. I'm going to cast this. I'm gonna play this because we might be in the territory where we start hard casting a street wraith. I don't want to take damage to do that. All right, here comes the rage. My opponent's already threw three lightning bolts, so yeah, I definitely think I'm hard casting a street wraith if I if I draw it. Um. I only got two more red cards in my deck, so I'm just gonna get another green source. This is probably a removal spell. So I'm just gonna do this to be mana efficient. It's the fourth bolt. Okay, I'm actually just gonna brutality them to gain life because I don't wanna die to an elf off the top. Drew all four lightning bolts, jeez. All right, there's Kitchen Finks. <coughs> I'm just gonna take this two damage. Like, I'm gonna push a Tarmogoy if they can play it. I died a K command here, but like, such is life. Yeah, I got some much better push target. Sphinx is really annoying though. All right, opponent miss. Alright, Kitchen Fanks means I need to hit again. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm gonna bobble myself to see what my top card is. Because I need to hit a removal spell. Okay, it's a thought seize. So in my opponent's upkeep, I'm gonna fetch. Because <coughs> I can't draw this. And I need revolt. Get this from the play tapped. Well, they got us. We got Jundin. We 
I got Jundin. I just needed... Well, there she was. If we'd have hit the last hope, we would have been in really good shape. But we just got Jundin. And that's a tight matchup. Like, you know, you're an 18-land aggressive deck versus, uh, you know, a 25-land 20, deck that hits the bombs at the end. It's not time to Blue Moon, Johnny, until I figure out exactly my 75 that I want to play here. Billy, no. Uh, let me see if I missed anybody here from the follows. Billy, no. Yeah, you know. So the fighter pig, Professor French, um, iron, iron, iron Fahrenheit. If you guys are still here, thank you for the follows. I appreciate that. Oh, this sounds great. We're gonna go get an overgrown tomb on turn one. It happens to the best of us. It was a good match, Billy. No, you know not to do that. All right, we're gonna check out what our opponent's cooking with over here. All right, here we go. So I think in this hand, it's a clear vile take because the man is gonna be a little choked for a couple turns. And if I draw a removal spell here, I'm in pretty good shape because I get to kill a Hierarch as long as they don't draw another land. I'm gonna traverse for a land. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so do I start beating down with Tom? I think I'm going to get Tarmaloif down. And I think I'm going to get Stomping Ground. Because we might have to, like, we might need a blue source or two. I could Inquisition, but, like, that feels a little mopey. Just doesn't leave me with a very efficient turn. So they're going to Mantis Rider me, which, like... Puts me on notice, which means at least I can get Death Shadow into play next turn. Wow, they're going to play the Freebooter. Okay. Interesting. This means I can't get Shadow into play next turn, <clears throat> which kind of sucks. But I can get Grim Flare down. So I'm actually going to traverse for a land here because I want to be able to play both Death Shadows next turn. When my opponent plays a Mantis Rider and clocks me. We're going to need a teamer. We're going to need a teamer battle rage to win this game. Cuz we just don't have enough removal. Okay, so there's a vial. That's a late vial. So we got a lieutenant coming. Oh, right, here comes the match spider. Okay. <coughs> Opponent clocks me for five. Okay, so what do we got here? We got. Next turn, I get my opponent attack me for one, three, four, one, three, four, and this right here is one, three, one, three, four, plus four is eight. So my opponent can attack me for eight next turn. So now I'm gonna attack with both of my creatures. Well, I'm not gonna attack with the Grim Flare. I would like to attack with the Grim Flare, but unfortunately, because I'd like to be able to find a Battle Rage, or at some point,
And now I'm going to play two shadows. There's an argument that I should have attacked with my flare. Well, there, actually, there's no argument to that. Never mind. Because I would need to draw an instant to get Delirium to traverse, but like I don't have the Gore Climber Rage on my deck. Philly. Philly's playing with his favorite his favorite toy, which is a little noisy. This is a Reflector Mage. Gross. Okay. A champion parish? No, it's a noble hierarch. Okay. So my opponent is still very dead to a um to a battle rage, I feel. Because they're gonna lose their entire board if I draw a battle rage. Nope, that's not it. Um Yeah, I can't I just didn't draw a removal spell the whole game, which you're never going to be humans if you don't draw a way to interact with the board. That's why this deck is gas. This humans deck is very good. Why do you think taking Vial turn one was wrong, Dollawab? Okay, I don't want this. I don't want my denials. I want all of my removal. I don't like a lot of discard. I need to interact with the board. And I like the Snapcaster Mage because it allows me to like reuse some cards. I could bring in these brutalities, but I don't know what to cut. Like I could just cut all of my Inquisitions. I don't want to cut Thoughtseize because it's very important for me to like get my t life total low enough so that I can Death Shadow them. So let's see what else I want here. So it's like these two cards versus a Collective Brutality. He had Double Noble. He's going to hit his second land. Well, you don't know he's going to hit his second land. They're a 19, 1920 land deck. He's playing around to play his threats. I don't think he's Rider. Or Lieutenant was the take. Probably Rider. If I was going to take a creature, I would take Mantis Rider. I agree with you there. I just thought that if they missed on land drops, which in a 19 to 20 land deck, it's likely that the Vile enables them to start like effectively double spelling. Now, it was worst case scenario as they hit a land. Like, that was, you know, that got us. Let me just think about the side real quick. I think I want to cut these two for for the for a little bit more creature removal. Yeah, I mean, if you... Dylan, I will give you a donation if you play my deck tonight, because I don't have time to play it. But I can watch. I got lots of homework. Yeah, I'll play your... I'll play your deck. You can just subscribe, Johnny, and I'll play it. Show me that math, Dalawab. Show me the math where in a 19 land deck, 19 lands, between 19 and 18 left in their deck, with two cracks at it, they'll hit their second land. And then I'll buy it. That works too, Johnny. I'll keep this. I'm going to get Blood Crypt with this. <coughs> this is a pretty fine hand. I was thinking about it. Okay, Morgan to six. All right, well, let's check them out. So we're gonna have, we're gonna have Delirium which is great. So they have a vial on top, which they put on top. <coughs> the vial's annoying. There's not very much that we can do about it. Why you play Thoughtseize over Inquisition? Because I want to get my life total low, Fighter Pig, so I have the option to just battle rage them out of the game. Okay, so I'm going to bank on myself hitting a land, and I'm going to take this Dismember so that I can get, and then I'm just going to plan on hitting this Mirror and Crusader 
with a Radiant Flames. I don't want my Tarmogoyf to die. Though, had I taken Mirror and Crusader, Tarmogoyf wouldn't have done anything anyways because it would have grown, so that was a mistake. That was a punt on my part. I didn't do the Tarmogoyf math beforehand. So, Unclaimed Territory into Noble Hierarch. Yeah, this, is, this was a mistake on my part. Ooh, they play the Vile. Yeah, this was a mistake on my part doing this. I should have taken like the Mirren Crusader and left them with a the Dismember because they needed to have a block. But then if they block into it, well, then I can just terminate their thing and I effectively get a two for one. So they're gonna vial in the Noble Hierarch at the end of their turn. <laughs> and then they're gonna have this guy down. Okay, so. So I need to be able, I think I need to, I can actually just traverse. For a swamp. I'm gonna just play this now so that I can get, it just pumps Tarmogoyf one more point. I could have gotten a forest and played another Tarmogoyf, which probably would have been good. But this, this leaves me as in, like, any meddling mage as me. Yeah, I'm all over the place in the second league. I'm not playing as well as I usually as I usually do. Phil, hey. Yeah, that was dumb. I should have gotten a forest and then played a second time life. Left them with a freebooter. So we know they have Mirror and Crusader and two unknowns. Okay, so we beat, here we beat a Thalia's Lieutenant. Oh, that's gas. Green, hang on. Red, green, black. They can dismember me now, which would feel bad, but then they're at least out of cards. <coughs> okay, what do we got? Image, gross. Image, my goif. Okay. Yep, they got it. I was, I had a Thalia's Lieutenant on the brain. Didn't think about this one. Meddling Mage, naming Tarmogoyf? Or Terminate. They know I have a Terminate. Yep. Yep. So we, I, I've taught, I've effectively tossed this match, I feel. Which is a little frustrating. But. We're just going to make a wall of goifs. And hopefully that, ser that saves us. I need my opponent to break. Because I can't attack and then battle rage over their Tarmogoyf. Or I can just target their Tarmogoyf with a battle rage if I need to. So am I attacking? I think I'm attacking. Or I could just play another Goyf. I think I'm gonna play another Goyf, and then if I hit a land next turn, I just go Rampage or Battle Rage, and then I'm in really good shape. Don't Reflector Rage me, dude. Okay, so I would assume this name's either Fatal Push or Team of Battle Rage. Maybe Radiant Flames. <clears throat> Could be Fatal Push, just kind of like lock me out. Name's Death Shadow. Okay. That's an alright name, I think. I've, I haven't played one. Tilt. Alright, so I'm going to attack with this. Red, green. All 
right, so we actually get him for a little bit of damage, which is nice. <coughs> so, Reflector Mage doesn't kill me, but it kind of kills me. Reflector Mage doesn't kill me on the board, but it basically kills me. Thalia's Lieutenant's pretty bad, too. Okay. So my opponent has to block both of these Goyfs. And our out is that they don't play around anything because they know this Tarma Goyf. They, they already use a Rampager. Three, six. Three. Am I, am I done here? Three. I go to one, right? Two, four, seven. And then I just Battle Rage a Tarma Goyf. I battle raids a Tarmogoy if my opponent blocks. That seems like an aggressive attack. Let's just see what they got. Okay. So we're going to battle rage the Goyf that gets blocked. And then that's 10, 7. It's, it's lethal on the dot. Right. 10 minus 3 is 7, plus 5 is 12. Yep, and this is why, this is why I play more of these effects because I think in humans it's really important to have these effects that break through the ground stalls. Yeah, I'm just gonna resubmit. Though these brutalities might be too slow on the draw. No, shoot. Shoot. So I can interact on one and two and then clean up on three, hopefully. So I think I'm gonna keep this. I don't think I can get a better, like this is a pretty good six. And there are draw, there's pretty good seven. There are draws where Liliana the Last Hope just cleans up my opponent's board. And this is a this is a curve where we can definitely, that's a great draw too, where we definitely can throw off like an ether vial by just blanking some of the things they can put in. Traverse on top. So Traverse hits me a land and hits me a threat eventually. So I think I'm going to leave it. Liliana Last Hope is also great against whatever the card is. Okay. So we're going to take Dahlia and then we're going to take Mirror and Crusader. Which kind of makes their Vile useless. Turns their Vile into kind of a mulligan. And then maybe they'll just... No, nah, they're not going to whiff. Let's be real. The odds of me actually... Killing this champion of the Paris. Paris is slim to none. Okay, so here comes the champion. Let's hope this is not a Thalia. Damn it. Alright, so we hit our land, which is great. So Mirror and Crusader. So here's a million dollar question. Do I push this and hope they miss? So let's do the math here. <clears throat> they've got, they've got 18 lands in their deck out of 52 cards, okay? One draw step's what I'm giving them, if I just push this Thalia. Then next turn, I go Thoughtseize, Traverse for a Shadow, play a Shadow. If they hit Freebooter, I'm in trouble. But I can just respond to the freebooter. It's a tough spot. Because if I just thought seize now, then the rest of my turns are kind of clunky. And I'm taking a lot of damage. But if this crusader comes down, I'm going to lose. So I think I'm just going to thought seize. And take four. <clears throat> and 
And then I'm going to punch the Thalia and traverse for a shadow. Oh, we hit a Thalia's Lieutenant? No, we hit a Metal Mage. All right, let's see what he names with the Metal Mage. Oh, this could be so bad if he names Fatal Push, because that's my way to get Delirium. This was a nightmare draw. Death Shadow? Okay, that's fine. So now I push this and traverse for a Tarmogoyf. I take five, <coughs> and then I'm dead. So I can't do that. I can push this. I can push this, take four, and then I can't Maelstrom Pulse. I'm in trouble. Do I have to just push Thalia, traverse for a Tarmogoyf, and then hit another removal spell? Or hit Radiant Flames? Because I go to five, both creatures are lethal. I need to hit another Fatal Push or Radiant Flames if I push the Thalia. And I think I'm gonna do that. I don't, I don't think I have another play, because I can go here, then I can't traverse. I can't traverse and play the Death Shadow next turn because of this. I could push this, traverse for Death Shadow, but then I'm dead next turn. So I think I've got to kill the Thalia. Yeah, I think we're killing the Thalia, and we're traversing for Eternal Life. And we're just crossing our fingers here. Melee Mage was a nightmare. Yeah, but anything there was a nightmare. Anything with two power was a nightmare. We spike a Radiant Flames. Holy shnikes. Tunnel Life. So we're dead to Thalia's Lieutenant, Mantis Rider, Keswick Malcontent, Reflector Mage. We're dead to a lot of stuff. So we need Fatal Push. Thoughts he's going to do it. Let's just cast it. I guess when middling stops from traversing for shadow, the next turn traversing for a second shadow, and then lose for whatever reason other blocks. Yeah. Let's see if the old OP goes for it. <coughs> I mean, they just 100% should attack me with both. All right. They got it. And humans, humans is very good. I think I think that humans is probably the best deck in the format here. Like we got beat up by that humans deck, which happens. We go from five zero to zero two. So sad. But we we, we we're five and zero against combo decks or decks that can't kill Death Shadow, and we're zero and two against creature decks. So that kind of makes sense. <clears throat> L1 is much better than humans. I don't think I believe that in SD. I think that I think the two most powerful decks in the format are Hallow One and and Death Shadow. In my opinion. Mulligan we'll this. <coughs> it's pretty good. Um I think I'm gonna put this on the bottom. I don't think we necessarily want that many discard spells against an unknown. I'm glad we did that. So if I'm either playing against KCI or we're playing against um, Affinity. So I'm going to fetch first, get an Overgrown Tomb, cycle my Street Wraith because I don't want to draw another land. All right, so we have a, let's hope we're playing against KCI. All right, we're playing against Lantern. So let's go with Ensnaring Bridge. Then we'll play Tarnal Wife, and then we'll Thought Seize the Whirr. 
Oh, this Academy Ruins is going to be bad. They hit a spell bomb. Okay, I didn't see this Academy Ruins. We're in a lot of trouble because this Ruins. I don't think Affinity is that good. Bloodstained Mire. I don't think Affinity is... Affinity just hasn't gotten any cards in the last couple years. That if you even just like moderately respect affinity, it's just it's I don't think it's that good at all. So we're gonna hope our opponent bricks on lands forever. Okay, so they're going for a land. Is DS over Gtron and Jund? I don't know. I think it's much better than Jund. Like Okay, so we want targeted discard here. Was impactful. Oh yeah, with Affinity Nuts, it nuts. Um, what's my best play? So he's got five cards, no land. I know three of them. I think the longer we have this Liliana in play, the better the game is for us. And that's just what we want here. Wow, he's got Sword of the Meek in his deck. Holy shit. <clears throat> All right, so now we can start, like, now we're in a lot of trouble. So now I need to get rid of this word invention and this discard at the beginning of each opponent's hand. You know, each opponent's upkeep, exile top cards, all cards in your hand face down. At the beginning of your upkeep, return all cards, exile the... I don't even... That bottle coaster seems like bad news. So it's unfortunate, but I don't think I can play this Tongue of Life. I'm going to take this Witchbane Orb because we, we're going to have to ult this Liliana to win this game. And the Witchbane Orb prevents that. They ditch another water. What's going to be tough, I, I guess we're going to be able to ult this Liliana before they can put Witchbane Orb on top of their deck. Yeah, I'm kind of unaware of the Mono Blue Prison deck. <coughs> yeah, so I'm going to bridge us. Okay, so this can't attack. So we're going to get their Bottle Cloister. I think this is just Traverse. Oh, I, don't, I didn't have Delirium. Well, it doesn't really matter. I actually should have discarded that land to have Delirium. So now this is interesting. Now I'm in trouble because... So if I go minus and hit in Academy Ruins and Ensnaring Bridge versus these three, like what's my pile? I don't care about this Pithing Needle. Because if I just minus and put Bridge verse, they just get it back. So I think I have to do is I have to go minus, put bridge and academy runes together. So if they keep this, they only have one land, and then I'm drawing to like my second Liliana or my two Abrupt Decays, my one Abrupt Decay. I think I only have one Abrupt Decay in this deck. I think Tron's very good. I think Tron's, I think, I think the best four decks in the format are Tron, Humans, Hollow One, and Death Shadow. I only have one abrupt decay. So I'm drawing to a two outer, but I can't let them put Bottle Coyster on top of their deck. <coughs> Not Bottle Coyster, Witchbane Orb. They draw Witchbane Orb, then I cut my outs in half. I think any form of Traverse is very good. I, I think any form of Death Shadow is very good. You can't go wrong. One, two, three, four. One, two. Can I get away with... No, I can't put another land in here. So let me go like this. I 
Okay. So now we're drawn to our two outer here. Okay, Dark Slick Shores. Oh yeah, now the game's over. They just ripped two lands in a row. I guess if I hit Abrupt Decay here, I kill them. I've got like one more turn to hit Decay, I think. Unless they've just put, they only have one. <coughs> I don't think any control deck that doesn't play Blood Moon is, is any good. There are good players that play controlled decks, but I don't think the decks are very good. <coughs> okay, so it's like do or die right here on the Blood Moon. Or on the Blood Moon, on the, oh, I can't think. It's do or die here on the Abrupt Decay, basically. We have some good tools after sideboard for this matchup. All right, let me fetch. This gives me another draw at it, basically. And I have to get untapped. Traverse. Yeah, I agree. If your deck can't put its head down and tell your opponent to go F themselves, then it's not a good deck in Modern. All right. Because now they just put that on top and then... I guess we're like still not exactly dead, but... I'm drawing to like a one-outer. So I'm not really worried about this league. So I might just like scoop this game and then go to the next one. Unkept thought. Jeskai Death Shadow. You mean Jeskai and Death Shadow? Do they not do anything? What do they do? They ghost quartered themselves just to get another land. Okay. So again, abrupt K and we got it. But that's it's getting it's getting thin. Now I don't think like so. When you think of like the when you look at results and Jeskai does well, I wholeheartedly believe that's because oh they do they put bottle Cory bottle Coyster on top. I wholeheartedly does that exile my hand too? If that exiles my hand, then we're not dead yet because we have the we have a bumped guy. Just gonna keep passing, like it was a joke. As his just gonna come out immediately follow which flavor. Oh, okay. Right, I just missed it off the top. Um like <clears throat> I don't even know what this card does. What does this card do here? At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, exile all cards from your hand face down. At the beginning of your upkeep, which are, oh, so it just dodges discard spells. Basically. Grafter's cage, okay. So this card blanks discard. Got it. Abrupt decay. Stub's not bad. Um, yeah, I think in modern you have to be able to like put your head down. And if you if you're playing a deck that doesn't allow you to put your head down, then oh, they're just howling mining because they're 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 hell bent. Get rid of that. Um, I should actually play. What do we got here? Ensnaring Brace, that does it. Okay. I guess I should have let that know, because then they would kill me with the Thopters. Blank's Discard makes Bridge always on. Yep, that does seem like exactly what they're looking for. So, I actually kind of like Last Hope in this matchup, because it rebuys Street Wraith. Well, actually, they're not, they're not Lantern. They're not messing with the top of my library. Um, I want all of this. And I want the grudges. The Snapcaster Mage is like, meh. I know I don't want the Terminate. <clears throat> and I know I don't want the Fatal Pushes. So I have to cut one card. I'll cut a Traverse. Because <clears throat> we saw they hit Spellbomb, and they could Spellbomb me to get me off of it. 
And I don't think I want the Snapcaster. I just don't see, and I don't see enough cards I want to take out for the Snapcaster. Like I could say that maybe I don't need a Battle Rage. Yeah, I can buy that. And the thing that's like, like when I when I poo poo on, no, we can't keep this hand. When I poo poo on like heater, we want to land on top, gas. So now I'm gonna cycle both these because there might be a street, there might be a discard spell underneath this blood crypt. It was not. <coughs> so I'm gonna be pretty aggressive with this stubborn denial. Actually, I might not be. I don't know. Um, and when I put poo on like Jund and Jeskai, like I say that. With that being said, so I have to fetch here, and we're just gonna let this happen. We're gonna go get Watery Grave. I should have gotten, well, now if he names Verdant Catacombs, I'm actually up Shit Creek here. But he'll probably name Lily Autumn Veil. Vale. Yeah. All right, that's a great draw. So now we're gonna get our boy down. The man, the myth, the legend. The three two, the two three, and then when I say like those decks are bad, they're only so they're only like just barely worse than the best decks. Like, like uh, there's like all of modern. There's so much parity across modern that you really can play anything. I think that you can put yourself in a position to do better by playing a better deck. Whoa, well that's fine. So I actually think I'm gonna snap that off now. To just make my uh, <clears throat> to make my Tarmogoyf two points larger. I don't like this card out of that deck. Like, you know, I'm keeping in my abrupt decays. You're just giving my abrupt decays more targets. <coughs> like, you can play anything in modern. You really can. If this is a thought cast, I think I've got to stub that. My time graph is huge. All right, that's a good draw. Lingering Souls. Holy shit. You want to talk about cards I can't beat. God, I hope we kill our opponent before they find a way to play this Lingering Souls. Okay, so they're digging for a way to cast this thing. We have one Battle Rage in the deck. I'm gonna switch that Battle Rage for Gore Clan Rampager. All right, so that's gonna find them their white source. My opponent puts any spell in the stack, and no, I can't do that. They should bobble themselves to see if they wanna draw the card, I think. So here's a question. Do I grudge this? If they go pick up a white land, do I thought seize this lingering souls? I think the answer is yes. Because I'm not beating the flashback on this is gonna be very hard. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grudge this. If they go get a white land or land that produces white, I'm just gonna thought seize this lingering souls. Because I can deal with two souls at five, I can't deal with four souls at seven. Okay. 
I mistapped. I should have left my stomping ground up. <coughs> For a second there, I thought that the Glimmer Void was dangerous. Like, what are you doing with the Glimmer Void? But then I was like, oh, they uh, <coughs> they have the Dark Steel Citadel, so that Glimmer Void is not in danger at all. I'll grab some coffee in between rounds. Joke's on you, man. You enabled my forest. Sword of the Meek. <coughs> oh, they just died. Yeah, they accidentally cast Sword of the Meek. All right, so we're going to switch our Battle Rage for a Rampager in this game. And I think, I think the rest of the deck's still fine. I could bring in the last hopes, but that seems pretty narrow. Like if they start going off with Sword of the Meek, then they're gonna overpower Last Hope really quickly. Uh, this hand's good. This hand's very good. We can fetch a blue source with the wooded foothills because of breeding pool, so they mulligan. Hopefully they don't mulligan to a ley line. But I guess this deck doesn't really care that much about ley line because of bottle coister. So this, this is getting a breeding pool regardless, so I don't want to fetch before I... Excuse me, I don't want to fetch first. Artifacts you control the hex booth, tilt. Um, I think this is just a whir whir, and then I can deal with the ensnaring bridge on the way down. Just make a deep file of it, Johnny. Let's get this big boy. Let's get this big boy down here. They're gonna bridge me. I'm gonna deal with their bridge. And I'm gonna thought seize probably this thing. Well, I don't know actually. Probably not gonna thought seize this thing. <coughs> Play a bridge. Show me the bridge, man. Yeah, I don't think the thoughts these there were. Actually, they're closer to casting this, and this will do stuff. They're actually kind of far away from casting this. So I think I'm actually just going to take this. Get a Blood Crypt, Abrupt Decay this. And then just start getting in there. They can't whir for anything that matters very quickly. It's a D, you know how to export a deck list, Johnny, on Magic Online? This is what this deck, this Death Shadow deck here, this Death Shadow deck with blue in it is the best deck in the format against com or against combo decks. You're going to just ruin combo decks all day. And it's just like not even close. Like if, if, if you told me that I was going to play against <coughs> 100 combo decks, I probably would win 70 to 72 or 3 or 4 percent of my games, I would assume. I don't know, Johnny. Is there's too much going on for me to work on it now? All right. That potentially takes a turn off the clock if they use this spire to make colored mana. Delay is really great right here because you know it's going to counter anything before they get to untap. The best deck against combo decks is clearly taking turns. 
You got some points there. Ooh, here comes the Glimmer Void. <coughs> okay, so I'm making black and floating. Okay. They're going to lose it anyways. So this is kind of a good play. Dollawab, you are a funny one. Uh, Brett, Nev, Nesty, Marquise, Elder Deep Fiend. Thank you guys very much. <coughs> Get out of my face. So what do I, what kind of, what card type do I need? <coughs> I think I'm just going to traverse for a Street Wraith. This Tarmogoy is going to be fine on its own. What does Snapcaster do? Snapcaster gets me a discard spell. So I'm going to attack first and then Snapcaster something. I should have held up snap delay. That was, that was dumb. That was dumb. Yep, I should have snap delayed. This will likely be fine, but snap delay would have been better. Yep, that was stupid. Because now I give my opponent a window here to land, um, like, a, if they top deck and snaring bridge, I'm dead. Yeah. Weren't punished, but that was a mistake on my part. Yeah, Arena looks good. Arena looks like a great game. <coughs> I'm going to go grab some Kofefe. Let's see if we can climb back the 3 2. Gotta ship this. This is a black source I keep it. Alright, this hand's okay. Do a scry on. We want the boy on top. So now we'll bobble them. <clears throat> Star is gonna be like a 4 5 after the first turn. Okay, so we're playing against Burn, which means I should have played the other land. Whatever, we're gonna shock at some point. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to take Eidolon because it's make Goyf massive. So now Goyf actually lives through um, Goblin Guy plus Searing Blaze. Oh, yeah. The big man. Played an inspiring advantage. <coughs> so I'm gonna thought seize now. No, I'm not. I have the swamp. I have a forest in my deck, but I don't think it's worth thought seizing actually. So I'm just gonna attack. <coughs> play another goyf. And then play a polluted delta, and then likely get a breeding pool with it, so I can just traverse for another time of life, keep my life total high. If my opponent does an instant to me, then the Tarmogoyfs are six sevens, and they can't no longer crack a fetch land. So both of these lands in their hand are done, are duds.
Aspiring Advantage. Okay, so I know four out of the five cards in their hand. Okay, Spike Me. So now the last card is a Searing Blaze. I think they're just super dead. This goes gets me Breeding Pool. Because traversing for a Tarmal is better than traversing for a Death Shadow. Well, probably not, but. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to do this to get the Searing Blaze into the Graveyard, which turns off all their fetch lands. Oh, I drew another card. Okay. Six, seven. Oh, I miss I miscounted. I didn't think that. I thought I tracked that lightning bolt. I thought the last card was Searing Blaze. I thought they. I thought I knew all their cards, but they must have played an Arid Mesa. So now I'm actually in a little bit of trouble. So we're just gonna send in with one Tarmogoyf. We leave ourselves. There's ways we lose now. We did five out Oceanborn. We're we're one two in this league right here. So both their fetch lands are duds. I'm blocking. Okay. All right, we're going to send in here both. <coughs> and if we lose this game, it's my fault. I shouldn't have... I guess I shouldn't have tossed off the... I guess the, the Thazis still saved me one life. But I could lose this game on my own mess-ups here. Yep, yeah, see, if they, so now, if they hit a burn spell, I'm dead. Which is my fault. Looks like they didn't hit it. They did. Yep. Yeah. So I tossed that. It's all my fault. Which happens. So again, we want all of these. We're going to cut Liliana, two Street Wraiths, two Thought Seizes. And a land. <clears throat> Bring these back in. So I wonder if it'll matter. If I hadn't thought seized, I'd be up two more points of life. They would be also up two more points of life because we got an instant in the graveyard because of the thought seize. Okay, so we have three quarters of delirium. I think I'm gonna keep this. No, we, we have half. We're halfway to Delirium, but we have two of our. We have two very good cards in our hand for the matchup. <clears throat> oh, Ring Griffiner, are you usually a YouTube YouTube watcher? Which for everybody in chat, I always archive all of my streams on YouTube. And it's linked below, and that's the best way that you can. That's the best way that you can support me. Is just check out my YouTube videos. There, it's free to like. You should subscribe. It's free to subscribe. Doesn't cost you anything. That's 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 what I that's what I'm looking for from all of you. Okay, so now I'm gonna fetch. Now I'm gonna fetch a uh, swamp and kill this. We're just not looking. We're probably gonna play a slow game here. <clears throat> Might be in trouble here, just not having enough of a threat. So maybe my hand was a mulligan. <clears throat> I just need some time. <clears throat> just need a little bit of time. They suspended a Rift Bolt. Tarmogoyf. Till. This is going to give me a stomping ground. Okay, so we're going to let the Rift Bolt come at us. The reason why we suspended the Goblin Guide is because it's going to do like more than two damage to us, more than likely. <clears throat> Now 
Now we, we really need a threat here. Yeah. Okay. This isn't good. So maybe I'm supposed to mulligan my hand. <clears throat> I probably, if I'd have had a discard spell, I probably would have kept it because that would mean I was three quarters of the way to the delirium. Tilt. Well, now we're going to get Death Shadow down because he's going to at least attack me with his Goblin Guide next turn. I'm just going to counter this because... <clears throat> This Eidolon's going to get on the battlefield, and if I'm very low and this Eidolon comes off, it's going to be easy, I think, for my opponent to just kind of, like, play a long game and get me. I think I'm just going to get my Shadow down while it's a 2-2. Two -two. <coughs> Abrupt Decay. Okay, that's a good draw, because that's going to let me deal with... Mr. Eidolon while pumping my shadow. All right, we're gonna let this one go. And I think I'm gonna traverse for a swamp, for a forest, so I have enough mana to go like Abrupt Decay and Battle Rage if my opponent does a lot of damage to me in the same turn. There's a world where we die here. Check out this sweet water bottle card horror sent me. This little swag, card horror swag. Okay, so they're actually out of cards. So we kill them, because I go battle rage and then in, yeah. Actually, I actually need to make sure I tap my mana right. Because we're gonna go to, this death shadow's gonna be 12, 24, minus two is 22, so we got him. They're out of cards. So that's 20 on the dot. That's just an absolutely egregious no block from my opponent. <coughs> like that's just so stupid. Like what do you think I have? The delays were gas. Bought me enough time. It's not really how I like to win those games, but... I don't want me the game. And it mattered traversing beforehand. If my opponent made a good play, they would have at least blocked with one creature. No, I think I have to ship this. Well, I guess I get two draws in another land, but I only have 17. I'm going to ship my hand. My opponent Mulligan too, so. All right, I mean, at least this hand's got a Tarmogoyf in it. They're going to five, Jesus. Um, I don't think we need another threat. We got one. I'm going to regret that if my opponent has a path to exile. Okay, Goblin Guide. Rampager. I'm going to cycle this looking for turn one interaction. Found it. This is a hand where we're likely just going to go like... Fetch basic, fetch basic. Okay, I'm actually going to kill this Eidolon. I'll take four damage here. It's going to make my Tarmogoyf massive. And that with the Gore Clan Rampager should be promising. That's a good draw. But we're just going to get basic forest, play Goyf.
Plus, we we lost the game. We lost the match to Burn where we didn't respect Idol on, so I'm just gonna try to respect it. They were playing to the chance of drawing a creature and accepting the making of the color. Well, make me have two spells. There's a difference between, wow. All right, so this is gonna get me a blue source. Then I, I say make me have two spells. Like, don't don't just like make it be a layup. Like, I've got four cards in my hand. Like, make me make me have it. You know. This game is going to get difficult pretty quick, I think. Maybe I should have got a red land there. I'll get a red land with this one. <clears throat> yeah, I need one more threat here to win this game. I'm blocking the idle line if they attack. So I don't think I can afford to draw that thought seize. <coughs> like I know this puts me dead on the next turn, but I don't think I'm winning drawing that thought seize. Wow. That was a sick draw. I think I have to still pass. <clears throat> I need one more spell to win this game. There's the spell we need to win this game. All right. No Boros Charm. No Boros Charm Path to Exile. If they had a burn spell, they'd use it right now. So I'm gonna... <coughs> I should Gore Clan Rampager my Tarmogoyf. Because if they have a path to exile, they have to path this Tarmogoyf, they still lose their Goblin Guide, their Lightning Helix comes off suspended, they need one more card to kill me. If I hit the death shadow I lose to lightning helix here but this beats path to exile right so this beats exit path right because they path they have to path this target if they die this right here these trade they don't lose any life lightning helix comes off suspend they need to have a draw that kills me so we're gonna we're gonna cast this on the target wife Okay. <coughs> and now we just have to fade one more draw.
So you're saying that I shouldn't have... Oh, they got me with the Boros charm. Tilt. All right, there's the 1-3. So we're going to drop from this one. Uh, let's go stop the 